question. When I, uh, first, the black Muslim, one thing that the black Muslim movement did, positive, uh, here in this country, the militancy that it projected uh, made the black people in this country more militant than they had ever been. The whole civil rights struggle was affected by the general posture uh, reflected or projected by the black Muslim movement. When I first came into the knowledge of the crisis within Elijah Muhammad's family in Chicago and what it would mean to the black Muslim movement if it were out, I chose myself to remain silent because I not to save Elijah Muhammad, but I felt I was uh, afraid of the psychological harm it would do his followers, plus the effect it would have on the struggle uh, that black people in, are waging in this country, period. When I first left the movement, I left and took the full blame. I even made uh, it appear that I was leaving. I never left the black Muslim movement. I was put out. And because the law in the movement is that when a person is put out, they must first be brought before the membership and given a hearing, Elijah Muhammad was afraid to bring me before the membership and give me a hearing for fear of what I might say in my own defense. So, it, so I was put in limbo, so to speak, suspended, and the uh, Muslims in the temple here in New York were told that I would be back in 90 days. But at the same time, they were being told that I would be back in 90 days. Brothers were sent out by Joseph to take my life, and those brothers are with me now. The police know about it. This is a fact. And uh, uh, it was only after it, in, it was only after I was out of the movement, and then Elijah Muhammad began to use the every pulpit in every temple in the nation to blaspheme against me, plus Muhammad Speaks newspaper, to poison the minds of his followers into thinking that I had actually committed some kind of treacherous deed against him, that I felt it necessary for me to tell his followers the real reason for which I came out of the movement. And I've been doing that ever since. Gordon, uh, you're a professional observer of, of, of extremist organizations, and you classify the black nationalists and, of course, the Muslims as extremist organizations. How do you uh, appraise uh, this this political warfare that's going on in the black nationalist organization? Well, to be perfectly frank with you, and I do believe in speaking frankly, I think at the moment uh, the Muslims are a dying uh, organization. They're on the way out. Uh, they've made no impact in the, in the Negro community nationally at any point, and even less so now. Malcolm has no place to go, which is why he's floundering so badly. For example, he's been breaking bread with the communists downtown. What com he's Wait a minute. What communists have I been Socialist breaking? Workers Party. You're, you're absolutely out of your mind. You, I have never broken bread. You have given any... several speeches, which they well, have that's not reprinted. Bread. I, sp I speak anywhere. I spoke in London, uh, England. Uh, you were very, you were very proud to week. go back several times, and they're reprinting one of your major addresses in I the militants. I spoke in a church. I spoke in a church in, no, in, in Rochester a couple nights ago. Does about that make churches. me a Methodist? We're not talking about churches. We're talking about... The Socialist Workers Party, the which part, is... You, just because you speak somewhere doesn't make you that. You speak to the public, and you speak on any platform. Oh, I and, don't, Malcolm. And I speak to the public, and I speak on any platform. I'm afraid, now, I'm if, afraid that's not if, the case, If Malcolm. speaking on the socialist platform makes me a socialist, then when I speak in a Methodist There's church, a communist I'm a Methodist. platform. I was in Selma, Alabama uh, last week speaking in Martin Luther King's church. Does that make me a follower of Martin Luther King? You were very no, your, your line of reasoning, sir, doesn't no, fit me. Well, I'm just saying that I was asked the question by Stan, and I think that I at, at the moment the nationalist movement has no place to go. They're floundering and they're putting out lines everywhere. And there is an alliance in the general Harlem area between some of the Peking-based communists, the progressive labor movement, and some of the others, the Bill Epton crowd. Bill Epton is a self-confessed, avowed communist. You'd agree to that, wouldn't you, Malcolm? I know nothing about what Bill Epton's uh, political philosophy is. Bill Epton, in my opinion, is one of the militant leaders in Harlem. Now, what his political beliefs are, I think that he has a right to them. I didn't say he didn't have a right. I'm just saying what he is. Well, uh, and he has stated to me whatever they are. I've interviewed him. He told me he's an avowed communist. So, whatever they are, he has he a right to. He'd them. like to see the system of ours completely junked as well. All I'm saying is that there's a lot well, of. Well, I think you'll find that a lot of the children speak, that are Malcolm? out there in may Brooklyn, I, may I speak? Are, are, may I speak? Are on the rampage against the segregated school system here in New York may City. May I speak? And King and some of his followers in Alabama right now are fighting against the same system. But you don't let other people speak, now. Well. They're your words. I, no, I, I'm trying to. You would be kind enough to let me speak. Go right ahead, Go ahead Mr. Mr. Hall. Well, at Dr. any rate, uh, they're, they're floundering now, and there's a lot of internecine warfare going on in the Harlem section, and most of the movements are small and splintered, and there are splinters of splinters, and I suppose only the future will tell uh, which one will emerge victorious and perhaps claim the most members. I would make a prediction, and I think we could come back a year from now, uh, Stan, and, and I think you may find Malcolm preaching a completely separate doctrine of... Uh, 
leading some other kind of a movement. Well, you know, one of the best compliments that um, Dr. Hall here can pay me is just what just the things that he says. When he begins to pat me on the back, I'll be worried. I'm not patting you on the back. When a person, I told I you said, up in Boston I said, I said, that when you give begin, a little time and you'll be preaching a new line, I and you said, are. Begin, when you begin to pat me on the back, I'll be worried. When you begin, people of your profession, who make a profession out of dealing with uh, groups in this country, uh, when you begin to pat me on the back, then I'll be worried, sir. Well, now, I, I would advise you, if you think that nationalism has no influence whatsoever, the Nationalists, the Organization of Afro-American Unity, are having a rally at the Audubon Ballroom on no, Broadway. You mentioned it earlier. You're getting in a couple I'm of I'm going to mention months. it again. <laughs> that uh, I wouldn't come on the program and not mention it. Okay. Because uh, uh, one of the most difficult things for nationalists to do is to let the public know what they're doing. So we're having this rally at the Audubon. I know the public is engaged in a vast conspiracy against you. It's you're going to make me mention it four or five times. We're having this rally. <laughs> we're having this. We're having this rally at the Audubon Ballroom this coming Sunday at two o'clock. And people just like you, who consider themselves experts on nationalists are given front seat invitations. And I would advise you, since it's your profession to know what nationalists and other so-called extremists are doing, to come and be our guest. Now, one thing I'd like to point out too, Dr. Hall, whenever you find You're black... perfectly well, I'm not a doctor, Malcolm. So well, you sound like an expert right. on something. I thought you were a doctor. Uh, uh, you, uh, whenever you find uh, the condition that black people are confronted by in this country, being permitted by the government to exist so long, the condition in itself is extreme. And any black man who really feels about uh, this situation that our people are confronted by, his feelings are extreme. You can't take a, a cough syrup and cure somebody who has pneumonia. And the black people are becoming more extreme every day. I was in little. I was in uh, Alabama uh, a couple of weeks ago before I went to England, uh, down there with Dr. King and some of the others who are trying to uh, just register and vote. Now I'll tell you frankly, uh, with. King is supposed to be the most moderate, most conservative, most loving, most endorsed, most supported. Now the word is responsible, but go ahead. Okay, responsible to the white power structure. To me, when white people talk about responsible... No, he's a responsible American. That's when, 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 when people like you usually refer to Negroes as responsible, you mean Negroes who are responsible in the context of your type of thinking. So getting right back to Dr. King, anytime you find a person who goes along with the government to the degree that Dr. King does, and still, Dr. King's followers, children, are made to run down the road by brute policemen uh, who are nothing but Klansmen, and the federal government can step in and do nothing about it. I will guarantee you that you are producing extremists by the thousands. Now, when I was down there, they would permit, they wanted me to speak to the press, but didn't want me to speak to the church or the children or the students. Let me ask and you, it was Malcolm. the students themselves that insisted that I speak that gave me the opportunity Malcolm, to speak. how do you think that's going to be changed? Uh, uh, I, I, I do, how? I mean, no, I, I know you're talking about these children being made into extremists, but how, or, how is that situation going to be changed? Do you think by warfare? Not, it's not going to be uh, changed by uh, making believe that it doesn't exist to the intense degree that it exists, and it's not going to be changed by, by putting out polls like Newsweek magazine did la uh, last week, implying that Negroes are satisfied with the rate of progress. This is deluding yourself. And my contention is that white people do themselves a disservice by putting out these kind of things to make it appear that Negroes are satisfied when the most explosive situation racially that has ever existed in this country exists right now. And all of your so-called responsible leaders, when they speak about the situation, they say everything is in check. Yet every day you find uh, Negro children becoming more explosive yeah, than they've ever been before. You're not answering my question. Uh, you're avoiding it. Uh, I asked you, how is it going to change? Is it going to change uh, through... Uh, extreme behavior, extreme, let's call it extreme reaction. Uh, in other words, you are going to react extremely to a situation that you don't like. Now, how extreme can your reaction be? Well, sir, when Russia put missiles in Cuba, mm -hmm. the only thing that made Russia get her missiles out of Cuba was when America pointed missiles right back at Russia. Are you suggesting revolution? I'm, no, I'm saying this, that when you respect the intelligence of black people in this country as being equal to that of white, then you will realize that the reaction of the black man to oppression will be the same as the reaction of the white man to oppression. The white man will not turn the other cheek when he's being oppressed. He will not practice any kind of love of a clan or a citizen council or anyone else. But at the same time, the white man is asking the black man to do this. So all I'm saying is, I absolutely believe the situation can be changed. But I don't think it can be changed by white people taking a, a hypocritical approach 
pretending that it is not as bad as it is, and by black leaders, so-called responsible leaders, taking a hypocritical approach, trying to make white people think that black people are patient and long-suffering and are willing to sit around here a long time or a great deal of time longer until the problem is, 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 is made better. More That's words, right. and uh, he began by saying that uh, he has to confess that he was responsible for misleading so many people on the Muslim count. There were never very many Muslims. Let's always come back to the fact that not very many people were ever misled. The white press was misled into believing there were a lot of Muslims. Dr. Hall. There were never more than 15,000 Muslims Dr. in America, Hall. and there, were, there are only now 6,000, and we have 22 million Negroes in the United States. Keep Dr. these facts Dr. Hall. uppermost in one's here's, mind. Well, you, said, you admitted this at the very beginning, Malcolm. Well, you said here, the 15,000 figure is correct. Here's though. another fact. These are facts, Malcolm. Here's, here's another fact you have to keep in mind. There never were many Mao Mao. There never were. There were always more Kikuyu, more Kenyans than Mao Mao. And what is this supposed to prove? But it was the Mao Mao who brought independence to Kenya. Yes, but and the man who was uh, regarded as an extremist and a monster just five years ago, Jomo Kenyatta, mm -hmm. is the president of, of uh, the Republic of Kenya today. And it is this same man who five the years ago... The situation in please, colonial sorry. Africa is not like it is in the United well, States. Well, this is colonial. Anytime you have a system in 1965 that will take children and let them be marched down the road by not yeah, well, criminal in, elements. In numbers, in numbers but, you, have to, you have to draw one big analogy. In the United States, the Negro is still the minority in the United States. And, and when you're talking about minorities within minorities within minorities, well, you start still, boiling uh, it all down. Uh, you I can't say, really draw that analogy of a I colony. Say this, I say this, that the Mau Mau was, uh, was also a minority, a microscopic minority, but it was the Mau Mau who not only brought independence to Kenya within but it, a vast Negro majority but it brought brought but it's still that that a uh, wick the powder keg is always larger than the wick the smallest thing in the powder keg is the wick you can touch the powder all day long and nothing happens it's the wick that you touch that I wouldn't want the powder to. I think it'll blow up it's the wick <laughs> that you touch that sets the powder off and if you go here in Harlem and you take all these moderate uh, Negroes that uh, Dr. Hall here puts the stamp of approval on and regards them as responsible they don't explode it's the wick. It's that small element that you refer to as nationalists and other. You're doing uh, all you can to encourage it, Malcolm. Not encourage. Whether you're informed or not, no, no, I don't. I don't, I, no, no, I, don't I, do. I'm not, I don't encourage it. But I'm not going to sit here and pretend that it doesn't exist. I'll don't take you, you, don't you incite, Malcolm? Don't I don't you think incite? so. I don't. How are you going to in, incite people who are living in slums and ghetto? It's the city structure that incites. A city that continues to let people live in rat nest dens in Harlem and pay higher rent in Harlem than they pay downtown. This is what incites it. Uh, who lets merchants outcharge or overcharge people for, for their groceries and their clothing and other commodities in Harlem while you pay less for it downtown. This is what incites it. A, a city that will not create some kind of employment for people who are barred from having jobs just because their skin is black. That's what incites it. Don't ever uh, accuse a black man for voicing his resentment and dissatisfaction over the criminal condition of his people as being responsible for inciting a situation, you have to indict the society that allows these things to exist. And this is where I differ with Dr. Hall. Well, in the well, same, we differ in many places, Malcolm. This is not one of the many places, Dr. Hall, where we differ. Well, in a sense, didn't Hitler also talk about different points of view? Didn't he say that conditions existed? And didn't he also incite people? Well, I, I'm, I don't know anything about Hitler. Yeah. I, I wasn't in Germany. I'm um, in America. Malcolm, don't, don't, don't please. I say I Malcolm, wasn't in. I say I don't know anything about <laughs> Hitler. I wasn't in Germany, but I have. You know Hitler. about Hitler. Well, though. you can't point to Hitler in Germany behind what's going on here in America. Turn on the television tonight and see what you're doing. You don't no, 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 no. Turn on the television tonight and see what they're doing with Dr. King. Mm -hmm. Turn on. No, this yes, is but Dr. King's methods are not your methods. Still, Dr. Method. King goes you along. Couldn't, you couldn't do in Alabama Dr. what he is doing, sir. You could not sir, do in Alabama. You better pray that I don't go and try and do what he's doing. Anytime Dr. Oh, King, these are, these are just, these are any just anytime words, Dr. King goes along with people like you, like you, mm -hmm. you should put forth more effort to keep him out of jail. You should put forth more e effort to protect him. And you should put forth more effort to protect the people who go along with him and display this love and this patience. If you would do more for those people and spend some of your time trying to help those people instead of trying to attack me, Probably this country would be a much better place in which to live. You spend too much of your time, doctor, I really, trying to investigate. I rarely ever mention you, you Malcolm. You you're spend, hardly worth mentioning. You spend too much of your time, doctor, uh, running around trying to uh, keep track of dissatisfied black people whom you label as extremists. Hardly. Whereas hardly. if you would spend some of your time in, the, in these places where Dr. King is fighting, 
then you would make this country a better place to live in. Malcolm, I lectured all over the state of Alabama <laughs> when you had nothing to do with the Muslims. Did you have on a white sheet? Did you have on a white sheet? Gentlemen, I, uh, time.